We've been talking about security on the internet and a lot of you have jumped straight to Tor. Is Tor really good or is it Torable? Everyone is watching what you do on the internet. We established that in the last video. But we're developing a lot of technology here that allows government agencies, even private agencies, to spy on massive amounts of people instantaneously. Now, a lot of these technologies are being used overseas in places like Syria, the Middle East, China, and, and we would never use them here. And the NSA would never, ever, ever do that to the people here in America. While they're doing all these things, they always tell us, listen, if you aren't doing anything bad, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear if you're just sending muffin recipes back and forth. Unless it's like yellow cake muffins, then, then you should be afraid. If you aren't doing anything wrong, there's nothing to fear. That's, what the, that's what's been said in China. That's what's been said by Joseph Stalin. That's one of the big things, like, if you're not doing anything wrong, why are you so worried about us putting our hand in your pants if there's nothing bad in there? Stalinist Russia, ho! Oh. <laughs> I recommend that you guys check out someone by the name of Bruce Schneer. Now, Bruce Schneer, on his website, he has a paper here that we, we're going to link to. It's not written by Bruce Schneer, but he's one of these guys out there who is fighting the good fight and turning that whole entire statement around. What he says is, if we are not doing anything wrong, then you have no right to invade our privacy. That's the way it's always been in this country. You know, after you have um, been doing something suspicious, then they can go get a warrant. Well, now that's all going away. So how can an individual subvert state level technology? Well, Tor has come up a lot. So right now we're just going to talk about the technology known as Tor, which is the onion router. Many different layers, many different layers. Before you understand Tor, you need to understand how the Internet works in the first place. You have things. They go from point A to point B. But there are many points in between point A and point B that they stop at. And let's say that um, everything you do on the Internet, this is your Internet connection, this is you. You uh, want to connect to a website. Well, you've got an envelope. You put your address on there and your return address. This is where it's going. This is you. It leaves your uh, facility or your computer, goes out into the web. Everybody that picks up this envelope that's, that's your packet and look at it and be like, oh, this person is connecting to this website, and they hand it off to the next router. And it goes from router to router to router to router until it's routed to its final destination, and everyone can see what's on the outside of the package. Yeah. Now, there's a really handy command that you can do right from Windows. Uh, you just open up your command prompt by pushing Windows key R, or just opening up, uh, press start, and then type run, then press enter, and then you press CMD, enter again. Now, inside your command prompt, just put uh, trace RT, T-R-A-C-E, R-T, and then put a space and put any website you want, any IP address you want. And uh, this will actually trace the entire route. It'll show you every router that you connect to and the IP address of every router that you connect to. Now, a lot of times when Anonymous wants to DDoS attack, uh, you know, a certain company or whatever, they will actually look at the route because sometimes it's easier to kill a router than it is to kill an entire website. So if they find out that this route is key to getting to this website, they'll kill the router instead of the actual server. I'm not condoning this activity, I'm just saying that's something that they do. And of course on Linux there are several um, pieces of software and several methods that are a bit more advanced than Traceroute. But Traceroute is a very simple thing that you can do right now just to see where your packet goes and you can see all the IP addresses and they can see your IP address. Every single one of those connections can see everything that you're doing. Now Tor, since it is the onion router, it separates all this. Well, you still got that that layer, like when you join the, the Tor network, you're still doing a standard issue thing where you've got the envelope and you're sending it somewhere. The difference is that the place that you're sending it to opens up that envelope and inside it is another envelope and inside that is another envelope and inside that is another envelope hence and the onion yes and there's there's in many envelopes we don't even know now there are special nodes on the tor network that are called tor exit nodes those are the ones we have to worry about and those are why we are worried about tor in general now the exit node can see everything on the envelope that is when the final envelope comes out it holds it up and it's like okay this is from so and so to so and so and then you reconnect to the regular internet and connect to that site from the exit node. And there are several exit nodes all over the world. Now, when this technology was in its infancy, this was very secure uh, because the state had not caught up to what was going on. But now the FBI, the NSA, uh, several different governments. MI6. MI6. A lot of people are running their own exit nodes, or a lot of government agencies, a lot of state-owned agencies are running their own exit nodes. And they are running lots of exit nodes. And that allows them to intercept things. Now, Tor was being used for a lot of really bad things. Like there was some child pornography on Tor. The FBI used that to catch, you know, they used their exit nodes 
to help catch some child pornographers. And that's really cool. I mean, if you're sharing muffin recipes, you may as well use the regular internet. But if it's a top secret muffin recipe, it might be okay to use Tor. Because, you know, you don't want anybody in between. And I really don't think the FBI is going to care about a top secret muffin recipe unless it's yellow cake muffins. And understand that there are risks if you are running a Tor exit node. Yeah, that's another thing to mention. Because if you're running a Tor exit node uh, and they need information, they may be able to determine where that person or where the Tor exit node was. And if it's you, they may be kicking your door down. Or if they just determined that you're running a Tor exit node and they want to intimidate you into not running a Tor exit node anymore, so that removes one possibility so that it will always go to their exit nodes, they may just come and knock your door down anyway and be like, hey, you got a Tor exit node. We don't like what you're doing. So that's also going to be a point of weakness in the Tor network. It's, we should point out that specifically the weakness here is not that the exit node can see exactly who's sending it, but they can see the contents of the message. So um, it, it does help to kind of trace it through the Tor network, yeah. but it's not foolproof. So you know if you're doing something really bad, they can trace it back to your public IP address if you're running a Tor exit node, but it's the problem of whoever's running the Tor exit node. So uh, there are several other areas of weakness with Tor. Uh, one being, let's say you're running a torrent application, and you're running your entire connection through the Tor network. You open up your torrent application. Now, a lot of times your torrent application will not know to use the Tor network, and you connect to a server, and you connect, and you're sharing things. It is using your IP address, and it's all freely attainable. So that's uh, a point of worry. Um, some programs you know, do phone home. Uh, if you open up certain programs on your machine and they phone home, they're phoning home with your IP address. And they are not using the Tor network to do that. Even if they are using the Tor network, they are grabbing all of your information and sending it when they phone home. PDF programs, Adobe programs, a lot of programs do phone home. If you log into Facebook, and even if you're using SSL, if they subpoena the records for your user account from Facebook, or it's like, show us the people that logged into Facebook from this Tor exit node IP address, you're still screwed. So I'm not going to condone Tor. Uh, at all for much of anything. It's also a very slow connection. Yeah, Tor's just not that great if you're in the States. I mean, if you're in Syria and you need to get a message out and you still have internet, assuming you still have internet, you know, it's, it's probably pretty good. So, are there some alternatives to Tor that are similar to Tor but more secure? Yes, there is. There's Freenet. Now, what's the difference in Freenet and Tor? Well, Freenet is um, it's not the internet anymore. It's it's Freenet. You, um, Once you're on Freenet, you can't get back on the internet like you can with Tor. Now, the interesting thing about Freenet is that it allows you to create circles of trust. And there's three different ways. You can trust anybody, which is kind of dangerous because you don't know who else is you know, on the other end of the line. But you can trust everybody. Uh, you can trust your friends or you can set up your own custom rules. Now, let's say that you're just trusting your friends. Well, you've got you know, Tom over here and he's your best friend. So you guys are trusting each other and you guys can you know, hang out and share things and talk. And you, maybe you made a, a song where you're beating pots and pans together and, and whatever and you want to share it with him. And you can do that. You can share different files and ideas and whatever. And Tom trusts Bob. Well, now Bob is in your circle of friends because you trust Tom. And now all of you guys are in the same circle and you are forced to trust Bob. So as long as Tom says Bob is cool, it should be cool. But your local service provider or your ISP can't see anything. Security, encryption, that's valued above speed. So it might be a little bit slow, but it is, I mean, they don't see anything. And it doesn't look like BitTorrent traffic. It looks like peer-to-peer -peer traffic, but it's just, it's just packets flying around. They don't know what it is. If they tried to grab your envelope, open it up, it's in Navajo, and they cannot read Navajo. And let's talk a little bit about the technology behind Freenet. Since it doesn't use the regular internet, there's no internet servers anywhere. The servers are your own machine. It takes a small piece of your hard drive, and it totally encrypts that, so you lose a little bit of storage space. It takes a small piece of everyone else's hard drive, and it encrypts that as well. That's where all the files are, are, are saved. They're all on that portion. Nobody can see it. Nobody knows what it is. If somebody kicks your door down and picks it up, that part of your hard drive is totally encrypted, so you're safe in that way. The only real way uh, that someone can find out what's going on on Freenet is if someone that's in your trusted circle knows who you are by name and can identify you as doing X, Y, and Z. So as long as your circle of friends is trustworthy and you know this to be true, then there's not much to worry about with Freenet. And I mean, can you think of any other ways that people could find anything that's going on on Freenet? No, there's, there's a frequently asked questions page on the Freenet site that covers a lot of this. And it's basically a dark net with you and your friends. So like if you have a big hard drive and that's all your pots and pans videos on there, you know, and you share <laughs> pots that. Pots and pans videos. <laughs> and you share it by carrying it back and forth. It's like that, but it's online. Mm -hmm. Now the files that are shared the most will get replicated to more um, 
hard drives so that there's so that they download faster and you know there's more people have access to them etc cetera, etc cetera. bob's got the uh, vacation photo of him face planting to the bottom of the grand canyon <laughs> and everyone keeps downloading it so now it's on everybody in the circle has a copy of that on their hard drive but the whole thing of me beating pots and pans that's only on my uh, you know, on my storage, and you know, because no one wants to download that. One guy downloaded it, but it's not enough to make it, you know, replicate to everybody else. I hope that makes sense to everybody. It makes sense to me, but I just said it, and I already understood it in the first place. So, of course, it makes sense to me. There are websites that are on Freenet as well. It's free it's, sites. It's yeah, free sites, and uh, you've got messaging websites and file sharing. So if you need to send a message, that may be a very secure way to do it. A very, very secure way to do it. If you guys want a secure way to use Tor, uh, here's an idea that Wendell had that I think is a good idea. Uh, there are several different distros of Linux uh, that you can install on a flash drive or on a, a bootable uh, CD-ROM. And you can take those, and um, that way, you know, the, the problem with installing it on your local machine is that there'll be a, you know, it'll be traceable. It's on your local machine. If you have it on a flash drive, it's totally encrypted, you know, like some of these uh, distros of Linux that we'll talk about in an uh, upcoming video soon. Um, you can just take those to a coffee shop, hop on their network, boot from that OS, get on tour, and then send your message. That is a little bit more secure or a more secure way. I mean, there's still going to be like camera footage of you in that place. So that's something to consider. We try to, we try to cover all the angles, even though we're not, up to, we're not up to anything bad. I mean, we're not sending yellow cake recipes or anything like that. We're sending, like, chocolate cake recipes. Learn to defend your privacy. Yeah, it's all about defending your privacy. Do not let them take your privacy. Right now, they keep taking a little bit at a time and a little bit more at a time, all in the name of safety. Like, we're trying to keep you safe, and if you're not doing anything bad, why are you worried? We're catching the bad guys, and we'll take a little bit more, and then we'll take some of this, and, oh, you've got naked pictures. We'll take those, too. That's the direction, and, and it's so gradual that we tend to sit back and, and, and we don't realize what's happening. So do not let them have your security, those bastards. Don't let them sell your bank records. Yeah. Privacy is important. So uh, we'll continue the series. We've got a few more coming up. We'll start showing you guys how to do some things. Maybe even show you guys how easy it is to hack into a router. Maybe. I'm not sure if we'll do that or not. Maybe. It's <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility, and we don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like let all these guys freely have all this, all this power. <laughs> all right, so uh, stay tuned for the uh, future videos. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe on the Internet, practice safe surfing, and we'll see you next time.